Hello, everybody, and welcome back to season six of From the Rafters of Rupp. I'm Kyle Macy. This season, we invite you to once again join us as we continue to profile legendary University of Kentucky basketball heroes of the past. So sit back and enjoy as we bring you another episode of From the Rafters of Rupp. Orlando Tubby Smith coached the Kentucky program from 1998 through the 2007 basketball season. Under his guidance, UK recorded 10 consecutive 20-win seasons, five SEC regular season titles, five SEC tournament titles, and in 1998, Kentucky won its seventh NCAA National Tournament Championship. I recently had the opportunity to sit down with Coach Smith. We began our conversation talking about his early memories of growing up in his hometown of Scotland, Maryland. I was on a peninsula surrounded by the Patuxent River and the Potomac River, which empties into the Chesapeake Bay. And I grew up there with one of 17 kids. And we just, being, being an exercise family, we were always competing for something. <laughs> <laughs> and then food, <laughs> affection, just just about uh, everything was, was uh, competing because you wanted to please your, your parents. Tubby Smith has been involved and participated in sports his entire life. I asked him who helped develop his interest in athletics and who was responsible for strengthening his love for the game of basketball. Well, it, it was my oldest brother. You know, I, he was the oldest child, he was, he was 10 years old when I had him, and Smitty, you know, obviously looking up to him and, and my dad, uh, but my, my brother Smitty and I watched him compete in all sports. He was a smaller <laughs> guy, he was, Smitty's probably five, nine, five, ten, but he was, I mean, he was quick as a cat, very competitive, and so you know, watching him and being around him, and just following him was, was huge. Tubby played football, basketball, baseball, and ran track at Great Mills High School in Maryland. In both his junior and senior year, he led the Southern Maryland Basketball Conference in scoring. But when Lefty Drizel was hired at the University of Maryland in 1969, Lefty rescinded the scholarship offered to Tubby by the previous coaching staff. The coach here at High Point, was a guy by the name of Bob Vaughn, who used to coach at Sarasville High School in Maryland. So I had played against his teams. So now when he hears that he am not going to Maryland, that's how I end up at High Point. While at High Point University, Tubby Smith was twice selected to the North State All-Conference team. After his graduation from High Point in 1973, Tubby moved forward into the next phase of his promising basketball career. When I graduated from High Point, my first job was back at my alma mater at Great Mills High School. So that led to me, and then Don and I got married. So we moved back to North Carolina, where we, where we coached at Hope County, Rayford, North Carolina, uh, for two years. So six years as a high school coach. And that's when J.D. Barnett took the VCU job. And they were recruiting a, a young man off a high school team by the name of Harold Thompson, who was the only player that Jim Valvano signed at NC State. But they were trying to get him to come to VCU. They saw my teams play, and, and J.D. Barnett asked me, he said, well, you ever thought about getting into college coaching? And that's how I got in. In 1979, Coach Smith was hired as the assistant to head coach J.D. Barnett at Virginia Commonwealth University. Then, after spending three years as the assistant to George Felton at South Carolina, Tubby Smith was hired by Rick Pitino to join the coaching staff at the University of Kentucky. And I was the only guy probably on the staff that hadn't worked for me. Right. Herb Sendak had worked for him at Providence. Ralph Willard had worked for him at, for the New York Knicks. You know, Billy Donovan had worked for him, had played for him. So I think God, I had a chance to meet C.M. Newton when I was assistant coach at the University of South Carolina. And that's how I got the job because we upset Coach Newton's great Vanderbilt team. And Coach Newton asked 
George Felton, you know, I think he made the comment that their defense was outstanding. And George Felton said, you need to talk to Tuppy Smith. He's the guy that in charge of defense. And I always appreciate George Felton, you know. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Coach Tubby Smith after these words from our sponsors. For me, this is my office, workshop, and even lunchroom. We can't take long lunch breaks. Luckily, there are more than 6,500 convenience stores where we can get Hunt Brothers Pizza. It's pizza that's made to order the way we like, and their wings and their wing bites taste great, and they really fill you up. I can even call ahead to save time, and for me, time is money. Hey, save me some. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's great. When Tubby Smith joined Rick Pitino at the University of Kentucky in the summer of 1989, the staff immediately faced the rebuilding of a Kentucky program rocked by NCAA probation. As I went there, we, were, we couldn't play for the SEC championship. We didn't play in the SEC tournament. We couldn't be on TV. And, and if you couldn't be on TV, that was a major blow to a program. You know, you had the money and, and everything else. But through it all, we were able to have a 14-14 record the first year and then went, won it the next year, which was amazing. That was a great group of guys that, that really worked their butts off. In two years as an assistant at UK, Tubby coached the likes of Darren Feldhouse, Reggie Hansen, John Pelfrey, Derek Miller, and Richie Farmer. And coaching under the guidance of Rick Pitino proved to be an invaluable experience for Tubby in his overall development as a future Division I head coach. Oh, yeah. Well, Rick had such a motor, you know, his energy level is, is just his belief in himself and, and the program and his work ethic is just second to none. I mean, he wasn't going to actually do anything that he didn't do you know, as far as putting in the time, going places hustling to see players, constantly writing. You know, back then you could only, you couldn't call. There were regulations regarding when you could call and how you could call. So communications, correspondence was, was huge because we all have goals and ambitions. We all want to be head coaches. So whatever it took and whatever they had, whatever they asked me to do as far as to, to build the program and we were going to do it. In the summer of 1991, Tubby left the Kentucky program to become the head coach at Tulsa University. Coach Smith led the Golden Hurricanes to a 79 and 43 overall record and an NCAA Sweet 16 appearance in both 1994 and 95. Success at the Missouri Valley Conference School led to interest from several major universities across the country. To actually see a new call. They said, you know, the job at George is open and Coach Dooley wants, he's looking for a good coach and you, you, you're, you're ready for it, Tony. See him in, Tony. So he was kind of guiding my career. He saw what I'd done in South Carolina and you know, he followed me, he brought me to, to Kentucky with Rick Patino. He sends me to Tulsa, to me and busy. He's watching me develop and helping me develop along with Rick Patino. So now, the opportunity to be back in the SEC, to be at Georgia, I had to replace a legend there, and Hugh Durham, who's from Louisville. So there are a lot of things that tie together there in, this, in, this whole, in my life, in my coaching career. On March 29, 1995, Coach Smith accepted the head coaching job at the University of Georgia. Tubby led Georgia to back-to-back 20-win -back seasons for the first time in school history. Then, when Rick Pitino was lured to Boston to accept his dream job, Tubby received a call. On the other end of the phone was a very familiar voice. So that's what the CM Newton called me, Mr. Tubby. It's time. <laughs> time to come home, come back. Uh, so you're ready. And so I remember talking to Coach Dooley about it. He said, Tubby, you, you need to take this. You need it. I was, you know, we had just finished pretty, we finished like, we finished third in that league that year. But, uh, but he, you know, like, Ben Stewart, Coach Dewey said, Tubby, you can win it all there. You know, this Kentucky's basketball school. You need to make this move for your family. And that's, that's how I ended up taking But the, the whole thing was when he called, when Sam Newton called, was 
Agnes said, yeah, I was very reluctant until Rick Pitino called. I said, tell me you gotta take this job, man. Taking over the reins of the tradition-rich Kentucky program was certainly no pressure-free task. After an NCAA championship in 96 and a runner-up finish in 97, expectations around the Big Blue Nation were, as always, running extremely high. As Coach Smith struggled to implement his own system during the early season practices, he received some timely words of support from the leaders of his first senior class at Kentucky. We had tri-captains, Alan Edwards, Cameron Mills, and Jeff Shepard were the three seniors. So I said, okay, fellas, we, you know, we can make you guys captains. And so and anything I can do, anything you can do. So it was, I was having one of those meltdowns. And, and we, so Jeff Shepard, Cameron Mills, and Alan Edwards said, Coach, can we talk to you? Yeah, get in here. I'll talk to you too. No, you know, I'll go there. What the hell is going on here, fellas? You guys, you're going to do it tomorrow. You know, we're going through the whole wreck and roll. It's a coach. You need to relax. So I remember forget Cameron Mills. One of them said, like, no, coach, we're going to meet the president. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. I'm saying, what do you mean? So when, they, when we win the national championship, coach, we get to meet the president. We get to go to the White House. I'm up from line to fly. I come said, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but that's the kind of belief and the type of, uh, that they had in themselves and in the program at the time. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Coach Tubby Smith after these words from our sponsors. You plan on being there for her for a long, long time. For recitals, soccer games, graduations, until she's a grown-up of her own. But what if you can't be there? Protect what matters most. Talk to a Kentucky Farm Bureau agent about life insurance. Come bless me, Daddy. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Big on commitment. Here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, we are blessed. We have opportunities some can only dream about. The ability to create and grow jobs and provide opportunities for upward mobility. A place that fosters innovation and excellence made possible by affordable and reliable energy. Energy that fuels our economy, provides better opportunities, and increases the quality of life for our neighbors. Fueling Kentucky. Fueling America. Fueling growth. Friends of Coal. Under first-year head coach Tubby Smith, the Kentucky Wildcats finished the 98 regular season with a 26-4 mark, ranked seventh in the country, and were crowned the SEC regular season champs. Yet, at Kentucky, critics are known to still raise their voices at anything less than perfection. We had our challenges all year long. I think we lost like four games a year, three of them went home. We lost Florida, Mississippi, and Louisville. We lost to Louisville. I'm like, well, they're gonna run you out of here, tell you, in a, in a hurry. Kentucky marched through the SEC tournament, knocking off 15th ranked South Carolina in the finals, 82 to 67. The Cats then posted early round NCAA victories over South Carolina State, St. Louis, and UCLA. With the trip to the final four on the line, Kentucky found itself trailing their national rival, the Duke Blue Devils by 17 in the second half, with only nine minutes and 30 seconds to go in the game. And the key is Wayne Turner. He just took over the game from a defense and offensive standpoint where he was penetrating and passing, just ball hawking. So Steve Wojciechowski the whole night. And I think that was a huge, because yeah, I never forget, I had a timeout. Yeah. I, mean, I was going to run this play, run that play. So uh, Wayne said, Coach, I can take it. Just let me take it. That's how, it, that's how it went. Against Duke, guard Wayne Turner played one of his best games as a Wildcat and scored 16 points while handing out eight assists on the night. Scott Padgett and Cameron Mills both nailed late three-pointers to fuel the comeback as Kentucky defeated number three-ranked Duke 86-84 to advance to the Final Four in San Antonio, Texas. In the championship game, Kentucky found itself down once again, 
this time to Coach Rick Majerus and the running Utes of Utah. Kentucky trailed 41 to 31 at the half. Largest comeback in a championship game at that point in time in history. Uh, well, <laughs> my whole march for every time I would go in because we came back about, I don't know how many times we'd come back during the season uh, from being behind. And my whole thing was, fellas, is, uh, the most insignificant score in sports was the halftime score. Led by Scott Padgett, 17, and Final Four MVP Jeff Shepard, 16, the Comeback Cats took down Utah in the title game, 78-69. After the win, first-year head coach Tubby Smith was presented with the coveted NCAA National Championship trophy. Yeah, that was a great win for us in that, obviously, that championship game, but uh, it's kind of a surreal type moment because it's, it's moving so fast, you know, at that time. You know, if you think about the tournament, it, it happens so quick, especially with the media and coverage. You got, you got open practices, you got all these things going on that, that I've never really been a part of. <laughs> the early season meeting with the Kentucky captains proved prophetic. Coach Tubby Smith and his Wildcat squad did end the 1998 campaign as national champions, secured the school's seventh NCAA national title, and did indeed Meet the president. Yes. Oh, I shook Bill Clinton's hand and she was there like, heck yeah, man, we had a great time. I did go to the White House. <laughs> that was one of the best experiences, you know, because my mom and dad came, family came from right in Southern Maryland. That was, now that was probably as emotional, not emotional, but just a fun filled atmosphere as I've ever been a part of. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Coach Tubby Smith after these words from our sponsors. Sorry, it's gonna take longer than we thought. Great. Hmm. Your wait time is approximately one hour. Yes. Take your time, hon. Play the Kentucky Lottery online, anywhere, anytime. I won! Yes! More games, more chances <laughs> to win. Anytime is playtime. <laughs> nice purse. Funding more than $4 billion in grants and scholarships. Coach Smith won a total of 262 games while at Kentucky and never had a year where he won less than 22 games in a season. With one national championship on his resume from 1998 and yet no other Final Four appearances to show after that, Tubby decided that just maybe it was time for a coaching change of scenery. Well, my wife was concerned, and, and you know, sometimes you can take on a different personality. You know, because I was very outgoing, you know, now I was becoming more, you know, I guess, guarded. You know, because there are things that, you know, this, this business can take you down some, some dark pathways if you're not careful. And so I. I just felt like I needed a change. Yeah. So I never forget when I first approached her, when we first, at the end of the season, I said, uh, I said, no, oh, Minnesota coach. She said, oh, the Timberwolves, Minnesota Timberwolves. I said, no, <laughs> <laughs> the Gophers. She goes, Gophers? Who are they? <laughs> oh, that's all. Don's got you too. <laughs> We're going where? For who? For what? <laughs> yeah. Coach Smith spent seven years in Minnesota leading the Golden Gophers to NCAA tournament bids in both 2009 and 2010. After stops at Texas Tech and Memphis, Tubby returned to his alma mater at High Point University in North Carolina in the fall of 2018. You know, when you're young though, early on you're going, oh, I'd love to be the head coach. You just want to be head coach in college. So High Point was always one of those jobs that you know, has potential what can do now. We got, you know, it's a, it's a different, uh, it's a different level, but the expectations are the same. Don't get me wrong. You know, we've all had two losing seasons now, so we've got to, you know, we want to get things right. Obviously, my alma mater. We've got a lot of things going on. This beautiful campus, so our, our, our athletics and our basketball, especially, needs to match the level of, of uh, extraordinary that, that they have here on campus. Tubby Smith has been a gracious humanitarian in every community he and his family have been a part of throughout his illustrious coaching career. 
While at Kentucky, he established the Tubby Smith Foundation to assist underprivileged kids in the community. It's an organization that continues to serve the Lexington area and remains to be one of Tubby's most enduring legacies. I tell you, it all started with Rick Pitino because he left, you know, he had his foundation, Tubby needs to start a foundation. He started, so he left $25,000 to start. And then, um, then we had Rohandro Parr, Ro Parr, a young man, a guy that I had cut from a basketball team back in 1974, my great Mills High School, who was a big sponsor and donor to our foundation. And then the fundraising that we do, and I, over the years we've, what I did over the years is anytime I spoke or auctioned something off, or auctioned myself off or played off, if I spoke at something, I was always donating it to, to the foundation. That's how you, that's, that's why the foundation became so, and I guess over the years, I don't know, four or five million dollars were able to. On December 31st of this year, Coach Smith and his High Point University squad will return to Lexington to play Kentucky in Rupp Arena. Since the time of our interview, the University of Kentucky has announced it will honor Coach Smith for his accomplishments while at Kentucky by hanging his jersey in the rafters of Rupp Arena. On a hunch this day would come, I asked Tubby what it would mean to him if, someday, he was there to see his Kentucky jersey raised into the glorified rafters of Rupp Arena. That would be emotional, beating it would be, it's a, especially for a little boy from Scotland, Maryland, from a farm in Scotland, Maryland. This would be amazing. Uh, just, because you can't, you, know, you dream big dreams, but it's, you know, it's hard to dream that big a dream, especially at that stage and age and in that time in my, in our society, you know, in my life. You know, looking at John Thompson, John Cheney, you had guys like uh, Norman Richardson. There's only about five African-American black head coaches in Division One at the time that we kind of looked up to. George Ratlin was one, so so we've come a long way. So that, those, that's what I would think about. Just, just and hopefully we've been able to influence and impact the game and change people's lives. Coach Tubby Smith has won over 600 games in his career as a Division I college basketball coach. At Kentucky, he captured five SEC regular season titles, as well as five SEC tournament championships. And of course, it was at Kentucky that Coach Smith won the NCAA National Championship in 1998. In his career, Coach Tubby Smith has been named the AP College Coach of the Year, three times the SEC Coach of the Year, and Big 12 Coach of the Year. Tubby Smith is known in coaching circles as one of the best bench coaches of his time and is well respected for his giving back to the many communities he has represented. His well-deserved honor to have his jersey hanging in the rafters of Rupp Arena is a testament to Tubby Smith's hard work and dedication to the game of basketball. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Until next time, when we hear more tales from the rafters of Rupp. From the rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by the Kentucky Lottery.